Oh boy, where do I even begin with Telos? Telos, the new blade that had been recently introduced into the roster of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, is an absolute beast of a character. This is mainly due to the fact that her kits, her passives, are all based around getting as much damage as possible. And the fact is, she can actually easily consistently reach these damage levels, but even if the scenario makes you unable to do so, whether it's because you can't proc certain passives, she can still serve very, very well. She can be very versatile, in all given scenarios while still working as a more than stellar damage dealer. Honestly, the reason why this affinity chart was so hard to fill out is due to the fact that she rewards you so well, and that could be said for both of the blades that were introduced earlier today. The two recently released blades actually set a very cool precedence for future paid DLC blades, and we cannot wait to see what they can come up with this summer in terms of sheer power output. What's up, internets? Welcome back to the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Blade Showcase. That's right, we're finally back, and you guys probably know by now, but there have been two new exclusive rare blades that have been released. One of them is for free, which is this one that we're looking at today, and then next time we will be looking at the one that is actually part of paid DLC. So here is Telos. Some people probably remember her from being part of the, I believe it was Xenosaga, uh, a game that was probably in the past, one that I unfortunately did not have the pleasure of playing. But Talos comes from the ex same franchise that Cosmos comes from, and they're a really, really cool duo in the fact that a lot of attention has been kind of placed in their actual abilities as characters. Part of the reason why Talos is so effective is that she can actually fit pretty much any build that you care to mention. Currently, I'm running with a current crit build. The uh, accessories that I'm using right now are the avant-garde metal for the usual crit heal, optical headbands because, she, honestly, she could just benefit from more damage anyway. I've also given her the high-tech eye now, due to the fact that she is part of the Great Axe moveset, you're going to be finding yourself cancelling out your abilities as much as possible. So what I'm going to be doing for this particular video is that I'm going to look at the various playstyles that Telos exceeds in, which is, well, basically all of them. Telos can do really, really well. This will probably be the longest one because we're going with standard DPS, occasionally going for the occasional, uh, what's it called, blade combo boosts. She's a very good unit overall, and the dark type element means that she's actually able to sort of stack up the abilities or the bonuses of her blade combos for herself so that she can create a dark orb all by her lonesome. Now, the first thing I wanted to mention about her particular playstyle is the passives that you would have a look at. The first passive, you might remember it if you ever use Cosmos, is Phase Transition Tech. Phase Transition Tech uh, increases the damage of special attacks by 100%. This is extremely useful, and honestly, you won't have to worry about using this anymore, just because, again, once you have that full affinity, you all you can do is just do more damage. It's really, really good. Another thing that she has for her other passive is Heaven's Tracker. Heaven's Tracker is really cool because because whenever you die as Telos's driver, your damage will increase by 200%, and these 200% will start stacking up on each other to a maximum of 500%. So you add that with the phase transition tech, so your specials will already be doing 600%, assuming that you die every single time. I'm trying to get Mr. Ice Cube Man to kill me right now, but unfortunately he's not being very cooperative, not doing a very good job about it, but don't worry, he'll get there, he has a tendency to do that. The next one I want to look at is Heartbreaker. This is very similar to what you've seen with Petroka's Sanguine Steel, or... Uh, Percival's Eater of Men. This is a really cool ability because, again, whenever an enemy dies, whenever you kill an enemy, you get 100% extra damage. So, okay, you saw I just got revived, and then it's 200% damage, and now when I kill this enemy, it's going to be another 100% damage. And if I do this, it'll be a maximum of 300%. And Telos, again, extremely powerful, and very, very powerful blade. She is only at S rank, but as I was actually filling out her affinity chart, I've actually found that she does such a good job of clearing out the big numbers really really easily. Now I want to talk about her specials for a bit. Her specials, again, they all do get the damage bonus from phase transition tech. So what we're gonna see here is the first one. You might recognize this effect with Cosmos. It is basically one what's it called? 85% critical damage. So if you're doing a chain attack build, it's quite nice. Unfortunately, it only hits twice, so it might not be as effective as Cosmos or Herald, but it is still a worthy uh, application if you want to do that. Also, I just wanted to mention that we also got ourselves the Dark Weakness, so this will be nice. Oh yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what this level 4 special, like, wow, check out this special, look at this, wow. 
Eat your hearts out, teenage boys. Okay, so one of the cool things about Telos is that because by virtue of being an Axe user, it's like the designers or the developers of this game have actually looked at what makes blades so effective, and then they kind of just stack them all into this singular blade. Honestly, both of the blades that we got from today's update are extremely good. I was go as far to say that in their respective weapon classes, they could easily be considered some of the very, very best. So look at this damage that we're pulling off right now, okay? Like, it's 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 nuts what we're doing right now. And you know what? let's just go ahead and give ourselves a lot of level 4, because honestly, we want to see that again. Here we go. Look at that damage that we're doing. It's, like, I wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't even looking at the HP, but I realized, goodness, we're doing way too much damage right now. So we're looking at, like, 500, sorry, yeah, 500% damage. Now, let's mention that my special will do another 100% damage, so that is 600% damage because I died once. We could actually take that even further. It's really, really cool stuff. Uh, in terms of doing chain attack builds, you could totally continue to run with that one. And when you look at her level 2 special, this increases your damage by... Uh, 100% against super bosses. So if I could have just spammed that the entire time, we'll actually do it right now. I'm going to go ahead and continue spamming this level 2 special because, again, we have a crit heal build so we can just basically live forever. And if ever it does come a time where we have to worry about Ultra Annihilation Flare, we can just go ahead and then press that plus button for that chain attack for a little bit more safety. But yes, the level 2 special is probably one of her more spammable ones. If you're trying to build for your level 3 combos or for your darkness orbs, I would recommend doing two level 2 specials simply because that's the best damage and then capping things off a level 3 or a level 4 because, you know, we just we can't get enough of that animation. Like, ugh. Really, really nice. I, really, I, I can't get enough of it. I don't know why I love it so much. Now, the level 3 special, it's what you'd expect. It's a guard annulling attack. It's really cool looking, does some nice damage, hits a fair amount of times. But honestly, like I said earlier, the level 2 special would be your best bet, especially if you're doing this in a chain attack. Now, if you are running with a single orb setup, this means that you will be seeing the level 2 special with all those bonuses from the chain attack. You will actually be hitting somewhere in the neighborhood of like 300, 400 thousand per line it's really really strong and it's probably her best tool overall so here we go we're actually quite low on health right now that's okay don't mind it so much and just wait for this yeah get the hyper graviton because that last attack bounced off oh do you want no never mind did anyone get doomed that's fine so that's the really cool thing about Telos is that, like, because of her passive, Heaven's Tracker, she's able to sort of just work under any scenario. So if ever you find yourself dying as a player and you're still trying to learn the ropes, Telos is just so, so forgiving. Because if you die, congratulations, you got yourself some more damage. Like, I'm intentionally trying to get myself killed here, so let's try it for one more. Give ourselves the free 200% damage. Honestly, under the correct circumstances, let's just say you want to get the maximum amount of damage possible. So, you will be making use of Heaven's Tracker. This means that you will die three times to get the full 500%. There will be a bit of an overflow with that, like that missing 100%, but that's okay, we'll take that loss. And then you also have Heartbreaker, so let's just say you kill three enemies. So three deaths, three enemies, now we are looking at 800% damage. Not to mention that Phase Transition Tech is another 100% damage for that special. And if you use a level 2 special, that is 1000% damage. Not to mention that we are now fighting against an enemy that is now resistant to darkness. So... We're still going to be doing a lot. We don't we don't care. Like Telos does not care. She is such such a good blade and like I said sets such an awesome precedence for what we can expect in the future blades. One other idea, like in terms of the actual what's it called in terms of the actual um aux cores that I'm using right now, I'm using Affinity Max Attack, level two special plus outdoor attack up, and really that's what you would expect from your basic bread and butter attacker anyway, and it works really nice. Like, well, again, this is an S rank. It's not even like I went for S plus to give her that damage, but she's already hitting half mil. Really, really nice stuff. And honestly, other things you can try doing is blade combo boost. Again, she is a dark type, so she can create her own blade combos. She can hit some pretty nice six digit numbers just by virtue of being a dark type. So yeah, definitely look forward to that one. Uh, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to try ourselves for another level 4 combo, because I know you guys love to see that. I'm willing to take the monetary hit, you guys. Let's let's make it happen. Uh, twin Barrel Auto Cannon? Here we go. I'll check out these Twin Barrel Auto Cannons. Sorry, I made a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, there's plenty of things that Telos can do so well, and she's so forgiving that, honestly, in terms of being so user-friendly, and the fact that she is a great act, so if your playstyle revolves around building orbs, then Telos can do that for you. If your playstyle revolves around just spamming away or with reckless abandon, like what I'm doing right now, then by all means, like, the world is your oyster, and Telos takes you to that. I cannot say enough how much I love this new blade. She is so fun. Like, she's no Cassandra. I mean, come on. 
Pokemon, but she is such a easy to use blade, and like we didn't even have to try. Like I was usually I have trouble when I play while recording, and my performance tends to take a dip. Tell us again, super super forgiving. Now the other thing I want to mention is the what's it called the aux core that I'm using right now. That's another aux core, the core chip. I'm currently using a moon matter. I personally find that critical rates tend to be more valuable overall. Like, yes, I do miss out on the additional damage, but I do lose 13% critical rates. And honestly, critical recharge is just very important if you're using a great axe. Not to mention that if you're going for chain attack builds, the difference between a... Like, the critical hit is the difference between 400k damage and cap damage. And honestly, you can expect that I'm going to be trying to go for cap damage after this video is done. As soon as this is done, I'm going to start spamming some items because I'm having way too much fun with this blade. I cannot wait to get her to S+. So here we go. Now, in terms of other options that you can use, like, there are plenty of options that you can use with Telos. Honestly, like, any build that you want. Again, building up your orbs, you can go for that. If you want to go for chain attack builds, she can work quite nicely. Uh, I actually kind of find that I'm leaning a little bit more away from most blades in terms of doing chain attack builds just because it's so simple. Honestly, just get a Poppy QT Pie, a Herald, and then an Orb Master, an Orb Master Common Blade, which we will actually, you know, we're gonna be seeing that today. One of the main issues with Telos, really, like the only real problem that makes her not so user friendly is the fact that first of all, yeah, you do have to beat the game to get her. Uh, but the thing is that most of us have probably already beaten the game a million times anyway, so I don't think that's really much of a problem. The real issue is with her affinity charts. Some of the affinity charts are borderline crazy. They're such, such difficult objectives to go through. Uh, particularly, there's this one where you actually have to uh, fight one enemy. There's only one of this enemy existing in the entire Xenoblade Chronicles 2 universe, and he's very far away from the nearest warp point, and you have to kill him, and then warp back to that far away warp point in order to get him to spawn again. It's a bit of a nightmare, but honestly, considering how much effort you have to put in for Telos, you are very much well rewarded. And the best part is, she's free! Unlike the other blade that was released today, she is actually free. And, ugh, like, this is this is very exciting. We're, we're living in quite exciting times. Just when you thought that Xenoblade 2 was starting to get a little bit stale, or that we were kind of getting used to everything, here comes Telos and all the other good stuff. Honestly, the cool thing about Telos and Cosmos is that it makes me very interested in getting into the, uh, the Xeno Saga games, which is, um... Like, yeah, some people have their criticism about them, that's cool, but honestly, it's all about the experience, and Telos helps us reach that. Another thing I wanted to mention too is that I think this might have been a day one glitch or something like that, but when I was playing, uh, when I originally got Telos, what happened is I actually saw that the key affinity level 5 requirements was just censored by all those check on those question marks. I don't know, I feel like a lot of people have had similar issues too. The best like, advice that I can give to you guys, the way that I fixed it anyway, is that I actually sent Telos onto a merc mission, I think it was Ursula's, it only took about 4 minutes before it was done, and then once that was finished, just go ahead and then uh, it should be available. It tells you to go over to the Alethros Ruins in Araya, and you are basically good to go. So here's that level 2 special that I was talking about. I didn't even get any damage bonuses, but it's still really, really good. If I killed three enemies, we were talking about like 400k damage at S rank. This is the bare minimum for what you'd expect from a fully maxed out affinity chart. She's so good. So good, I'm so excited for what we're going to be seeing in the near future. And also the other blade that was released today, uh, She Who Shall Not Be Named, is really, really cool. And I, I can't wait, I can't even wait. I'm very excited, you guys. All these blades, all these new blades. Haven't been this excited to see new blades since the, the Torna blades, actually. I think Mikhail is probably the most exciting one that time, but Telos is a really cool start. And I think, well, how about we just finish things off with this? Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I mean it's, it's a video game. You don't, you don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, not quite, not quite enough to KO. That's all right. Uh, yeah, but then, one, yeah, one of these attacks should be more than enough. So, yeah, that's that's one other thing I wanted to mention too is that there's just so many different requirements for finishing out her chart. But once you do, it's not really that much of a problem. So the last thing I want to show you guys is what she would look like in a chain attack setup. Now, the chain attack setup that I have, it's not really very telos centric. Like I said, these tend to be very centralized and restrictive in terms of what you can actually do. Um, also, for those of you guys that were wondering, the actual blades that I had, this is a 24% strength mod and this is a 24% HP mod. So how about we go ahead and then switch Tora into the mix? And when I, um, let's see, 
Yeah, this will this will be the last one for today. But yeah, like for those of you guys that are wondering, she's a very easy blade to get. She's a very high chance of dropping. So by all means, get her as soon as you can. And also, you're you're gonna have to anyway, just due to the fact that, again, she has uh, quite a bit of work. Like uh, both of the blades that came out today require a lot of work, and I guess that makes sense. These were geared towards people that are well into the post game of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So the the typical setup around here would basically just low like this. Check this out. Kind of to start things off, I uh, have an avant-garde and also I'm not too worried about tanking for a bit. Usually I would be tanking in scenarios like this until Tora takes it, but until then, here we go. And also you might notice that I have the Hazuki. For those of you guys that haven't seen my Common Blade video, essentially this has Orb Master. Whenever I commit the steps of the actual blade combo, it will create an orb per step. So this is going to be a free dark orb for us. And now Tor is going to follow it up and create a light orb so long as this character or this blade stays in the mix. So here we go. All right, we got ourselves this, and we can actually switch back to Telos and then initiate the chain attack. This is going to be some heavy damage right now. Now, one thing I would recommend for a scenario like this is actually just to go ahead and then give Telos a orb ender, because that is a light orb, and since they're opposites, it's going to be a one-shot kill. That's okay, though. We will be losing a bit of damage bonuses for Herald, but I don't mind that too much. Here we go. Get ourselves as much damage as we can. Unfortunately, I also messed up the order. Usually, I would have Herald's last, but honestly, though, like, whatever. Very little consequence of that at this point. And honestly, we're, this is a Telos video, so we might as well just show that. They're, like, this is far from optimized, what I'm doing right now, but this is just to give you an idea how it was like to actually try to farm for these. Now, if I was at full, like, full damage, like, if I had died three times and killed three enemies, this probably would have been cat damage at S rank. It's really, really good. There we go. And I think we're also going to see Telos' level 3 combo, so that's going to be nice. It's a level 3 combo looks really cool, but unfortunately, because you're kind of, the camera is kind of far away from the players as it's going on, you can't see the, the full intricacies of Telos' acrobatics. It's really nice, though, so I cannot wait for you guys to see it right now. Here we go. Telos, show me that level 3. Telos is a really good blade, you guys. Honestly, if you're looking for a good or a better kind of offense-based blade, then look no further than this girl. She's extremely potent but yeah guys thanks very very much for joining me on today's blade showcase it did stretch out for a, a little bit longer i just want to talk about it a little bit more just because we have seen that this is the new precedent or the new standard for what blades are going to start looking like she's such a powerful blade and i wouldn't be surprised if she ended up becoming quote unquote outclassed when the new blades start coming in later this summer and honestly she is a free blade so if you guys don't have her you better get her right now she's like cosmos but easier to get like, you know, more than a 1% chance of getting. And honestly, all the effort that you put in her will be very much so rewarded. She's great, you guys, and she's done a lot to make this game even interesting all over again. So guys, as usual, take care.